What is happening everybody? Today I'm taking you guys through my very first YouTube tutorial. I guess it's not really a tutorial, it's kind of like a breakdown of my favorite tools on Lightroom. Um, so I'm going to explain those favorite tools um, with you know the use of these images here down below. I've just cherry picked from uh, a wedding that I captured, a Ajay Anisha. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. So I've opened up Lightroom. And I'm just going to go through, um, you know, each of these photos and, you know, explain my, my favorite tool. So the very first photo um, with the very first tool that I really love to use is just a very simple tool, the cropping tool. So it's located at the top right hand corner here on Lightroom. Uh, you can also press R on your keyboard and basically use this to crop your images. Now, um, composition is a really big thing in photography and I always really love to play with this. Um, you know, just to get a better framing of my images if my images weren't taken properly the first time, you know, when I was actually shooting uh, at the time. So in this case, if I just, you know, use the crop tool, I can go through and just select what part of the image I want to crop in. Uh, and based on the composition here, I like something like that. Again, bearing in mind, it's very subjective. Um, so do it, you know, at your own discretion. Um, I could have left it as is, however, we've got too much of the left side of this pillar or this wall um, and we've got a little bit here so the image is a bit balanced, uh, sorry, unbalanced. If you wanted to go rule of thirds, you could have done something like this and hit enter. Again, it's completely up to you. I think for me, I would have liked it the original way, which was just zooming in, making this completely equal and enter there. Uh, the full video BTS is available for this entire wedding on YouTube so feel free to go back through my links and and check that out. Alright so the second tool I'll also use on this image is just the radial and graduated filter. So for the radial filter it's basically this tool over here and what it pretty much allows me to do is just to create a whole bunch of different effects uh, based on you know what sort of image style I want. Uh, in this case, I can use it to brighten the core or on the outskirts of the image, just depending on the actual vibe. Um, and I can make it darker, I can make it brighter. Um, I can just get proper exposure on you know my bride's face. Um, I can you know make it a bit more cinematic. Uh, there's a lot I could pretty much do with this in terms of creativity-wise. And the exact same thing from you know the graduated filter as well. If I wanted to make these these beams and columns a little bit darker just to you know stand um, our subject out a little bit um, I could do that and you can also hide and bring up the actual markings by pressing the H button on your keyboard um, like so at the same time you'll probably notice that there was a um, an orange or reddish hue that basically tells you how much of the actual image is being impacted um, and if you want to press the key button O uh, you will basically see that uh, coming and going so at least that way you'll know exactly what's being impacted. Um, but in this case, it's great just to play around with. I wouldn't, I'm not too heavy on these functions or these tools, as you can see that have a big impact. So be careful of how much you choose to do um, with these images. But uh, it just depends on image to image as to how much I really wanna you know, adjust it based on the actual creative vision that I have in mind. Okay, cool. So moving on to the next tool or the next function that I like using um, a lot of in Lightroom is actually down here in the bottom where we've got the HSL color tab. Now, uh, in this tab, you can play around with a lot of the colors. The most important colors that I play around with are actually the orange, um, the orange hue, saturation, and luminance. The reason as to why I do this is because the skin color that's most reflected within, you know, all skin tones uh, rely a lot within the orange. Um, the orange tab. So for me, uh, I always play around with the saturation uh, only because I want to reflect as much of the skin tone as possible and make it really pop with the image. So be careful, you don't want to go too overboard and also you don't want to go too under as well, making your subjects look like zombies. So you want to have the right amount. At the same time, sometimes depending on different lighting conditions, your subject's skin tones might be a bit more reddish or a bit more yellowish. Um, you know, this is especially prominent during receptions or you know dull lit environments. So you make sure you want to make sure that you try and get you know the most accurate um, skin tone color based on 
you know, one, your subject skin tones, but also the environment that was reflecting at the time. So for me, um, you know, something around about that was pretty good. And the luminance just basically reflects the highlights of, you know, the oranges um, and, and that sort of tone. So uh, I just try and keep it, you know, at a minimal middle sort of range, uh, nothing too much and nothing too under um, just to get, again, just the right, um, you know, balance of exposure within the highlights and luminance of that actual color tone. So there you go. Another color that I often like to play around with also is the uh, the greens here. Um, you know, the, this, the, there's a lot of grass in most of my outdoor subjects. Um, so, you know, depending on the mood of, of the shot that I really want to go for, I might adjust the color profiles of the, the greens um, and the yellows as well. Uh, depending on what sort of look I really want to go for and if I wanted my you know subjects to pop I might just desaturate the greens um, a little bit and you know just increase the oranges okay so on the image over here um, a really important tool that I often like to play around with as well apart from the exposure which I'm adjusting right now is actually the lens correction tool now the lens correction tool is really important what that basically does is it allows your image to be adjusted on two major um, categories one distortion and two vignetting why is this important now on this image I actually shot this with a 35 mm now what actually happens is with a lot of your wider focal lens Lenses, it tends to distort the edges hence why you want to make sure that when you're importing these images into Lightroom the enable profile corrections button is ticked because what happens is when it's when it's not your images one naturally has vignetting especially around wide shots and two it tends to distort itself out a little bit so what I do is I simply enable this button and it takes away the vignetting straight away but it also flattens the image and makes it sure that it's it's a bit more flatter as opposed to you know you know round that a normal wide angle lens has now if you want to manually adjust this and make sure that you know you're you're doing it based on a preference that you like you can go through and adjust how much vignetting you want uh, how much you want it to track away as well based on your own individual preference you know again I was happy with what it was in the initial phase um, same thing with distortion is you can adjust how much you want your images to be distorted and how much you don't want it to be distorted but again I'm happy with it being in the middle as well when you hit enable you, generally your camera profile settings with the lens um, and the actual focal length will be automatically uploaded in here so so Adobe Lightroom will basically try and um, fixate upon the correct look based on what lenses it's uh, entered into so for me because I was shooting on the Sigma 35 it picks it up and sometimes it'll automatically just do it for me now on the situation where maybe a new lens has come out uh, or a new camera body's come out and it doesn't really recognize the profile uh, you then need to just go through and manually find it or you can do it based on uh, any of these other profiles here that are already pre-listed and adjust it accordingly. Okay, now another really important tool that I always love to use on Lightroom is actually the uh, backslash button. Now this is located on the Mac between the delete and return keyboard. The reason as to why I love using this tool is because it allows me to compare a before and after image um, of my edited and the unedited raw version. Now why is this really important? If I simply go ahead and hit the uh, the backwards backslash button it's going to give me the before image of what my image actually was and now if I hit it again it's going to go back to the after image now this is super important because I want to make sure whenever I'm editing my images I'm not going over the top with my edits and really you know um, editing it a lot more than what it needs to be and basically just doing a color grade plus also exposure balances and that's it. I don't want to go through too much and start doing really crazy things and you know sometimes when you, you adjust your sliders a bit too much it becomes a bit you know really hectic and you know you might end up something like this and you might love this initially and then as soon as you press the, um, the backslash button you're like oh wait a second what just happened I, I, I went too far. Now, another tool that is really quite popular in Lightroom, and Photoshop can do this as well, but if you're doing a quick fix, then this should be fine, uh, is the actual uh, remove tool. Now, the remove tool is really important. Why Why do I say that? Now, let's just assume the couple come back to me and say, hey, Kartik, we really love this image, but we want to just get rid of all of these flower petals for some reason, and we just appreciate if you could take that out. Now, that is possible for smaller objects. Obviously, large things like, you know, these chairs might be a bit more difficult, but for a simple Lightroom fix, all you want to do is select this um, this radial brush tool. It's not it's not the the radial filter tool. It's the um, it's kind of like a remove tool. If I hover my mouse over, it's the spot removal, and this is on Q on your keyboard. 
So what you want to go do is you want to go through and just click on anything that you want um, Lightroom to take away. Now in this case, if I want these petals, these leaves, I'm just going to go through and click it and Lightroom's automatically going to try and find out where the best part of the grass is and replace you know, the leaf with that very part. Now if you think you could do a better job, then just manually drag that to an area where you think is a bit more appropriate and I think something like Maybe something like that is, is, is kind of okay, or actually, probably, probably that's good. Yeah, I think that's good there. Now, if you go through and do this, what you'll end up noticing is um, that you'll have all of these uh, circles appear on your screen and uh, your, your, your computer might eventually just have a whole bunch of these um, located everywhere. And sometimes it'll just be a bit hard to navigate through all of, um, you know, the circles knowing that, you know, you had one or you didn't have one. So what I usually do is I just press the H button and it just hides all of the edited areas that I that I had in mind. So if I go through now and, and just really edit these, it'll be a lot faster. It won't bring up those circles. And actually, I don't like that one. I just popped that there. Yep, perfect. And it'll do um, a good job in just picking this up really quickly and making sure that uh, I don't overlap any of them and that I can get as many of these things of these pedals away as much as possible. Again, everything's done in moderation, so do it on things that are very subtle that you can't really see. Um, and if sometimes if you want, if you want to do a big patch, you can, but then again, just look that Something to bear for is I've done a big patch here, but it's taken it from somewhere up here. So you just want to bring that back to an area that's a bit more decent. I think something like maybe, probably, probably there's good. And let's just say you want to you want to get rid of this this um, dirt part here. Then you could just go through, select the entire part, and it will automatically do it for you. That one's a bit too much, so I'll come back here. So again, this entire process is just going through and making sure that, you know, you're taking out the discrepancies and the things that you want to take out uh, within reason. Now, in this case, if it's just the pedals, these are doable and you want to make sure that you're taking the piece that you want away and it's being overlapped with a piece of the image that is clear and I guess a bit more realistic based on what your preferences are. Okay, so the next tool that we often use is actually the sharpening tool. Now, why is this important? Let's just assume that you really love this photo and for some reason, the couple goes, hey, we really wanna expand this. You wanna make sure that you know the detail is really accurate and that the image is still tack sharp. Again, this does come down to your settings. I was shooting this at 1.4, a bit more risky, but with the Canon R6, I don't really have any focusing issues. You know, my ISO settings were quite low and my shutter was relatively decent at the time. But let's just assume that I want to make this a little bit more sharper. Now, most of the times your sharpening should be set to like a, an average amount around about here. In that case, all I wanna do is select this square tool here and I want to go through and put it on, you know, you know, one of my subjects face in this case already was, but let's just assume it was here. Just select it again and bring it back to the face. So now that it's just focusing on this part as in as a zoomed in image, I can automatically look through and see how much I want to sharpen. Now, a good decent amount is around about just under 50%. You don't want to go all the way because then you might have, you know, all this grain that you can appear and see, especially if you zoomed in, that's not what you want to have. So you want to take it down to a relative amount and uh, you know, sharpen your subjects based on a preference that isn't really too noticeable, but also does a little bit of impact. Again, bearing in mind that you can play around with the noise reduction tool um, and the detail and, and reduce the noise that appears there, but then it also might blur the image a little bit. But for a general recommendation, these are the settings that I pretty much have and it does, it does the job for me that I really, really like. So that's basically it guys. If you guys love this video, please comment down below what was your favorite tool. If you guys wanna see some more detail on Lightroom, then I will be showing a lot more coming up on the channel. Um, I have been having a lot of requests from people in my DM saying uh, when it is the Lightroom presets, my favorite you know preset pack that I always use, the one that I created, uh, when is that being released? So that will be released soon. So watch this space. And when it is, uh, I'm you're more than happy to you know send you guys links to, to purchase directly from the website. So bear with me in the meantime. For now, that's it. I'll leave it with here. If you guys like this video, just hit that like button, comment down below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the very next video. Peace.